Hello students, in today's lecture we will be studying about oxidative phosphorylation and the mitochondrial electron transport chain. First let's look at the introduction. Oxidative phosphorylation is the culmination of energy yielding metabolism in aerobic organisms. All oxidative steps in the degradation of carbohydrates, fats, and amino acids converge at this final stage of cellular respiration in which the energy of oxidation drives the synthesis of ATP. In eukaryotes, oxidative phosphorylation occurs in mitochondria. Most of the energy released during the oxidation of glucose and fatty acids to carbon dioxide is converted to high energy electrons in the reduced coenzyme NADH and FADH2. The energy transiently stored in these reduced coenzymes is converted to a proton motive force by the electron transport chain, also known as the respiratory chain found in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So what is oxidative phosphorylation? Oxidative phosphorylation is the process in which ATP is formed as a result of the transfer of electrons from NADH or FADH to molecular oxygen by a series of electron carriers. Oxidative phosphorylation begins with the entry of electrons into the respiratory chain into universal electron acceptors, that is nicotinamide nucleotides like NAD plus or NADP plus or flavin nucleotides like FMN or FAD. Oxidation of NADH and FADH2 releases a significant amount of energy. During electron transport, electrons are released from NADH and FADH2 and eventually transferred to oxygen, forming water according to the following reactions. NADH plus one proton plus half of oxygen gives NAD plus plus one molecule of water. FADH2 plus half of molecular oxygen gives FAD plus one molecule of water. The conversion of one glucose molecule to carbon dioxide via the glycolytic pathway and citric acid cycle yields 10 NADH and 2 FADH2 molecules. Oxidation of these reduced coenzymes has a total of standard free energy change of minus 613 kilocalories per mole. So about 90% of the potential free energy in the chemical bonds of glucose is conserved in the reduced coenzymes. So why should there be two different coenzymes, NADH and FADH2? Although many of the reactions involved in glucose and fatty acid oxidations are sufficiently energetic to reduce NAD+, several are not. So those reactions are coupled to reduction of FAD, which requires less energy. The energy carried in the reduced coenzymes can be released by oxidizing them. The biochemical challenge faced by the mitochondrion is to transfer as efficiently as possible the energy released by the oxidation into the energy in the terminal phosphoanhydride bond in ATP. To efficiently recover this energy, the mitochondrion converts the energy of coenzyme oxidation into a proton motive force using a series of electron carriers all but one of which are integral components of the inner membranes of the mitochondria. The proton motive force can then be used to very efficiently generate ATP. Let's see the electron transport chain. Four large multi-protein complexes, denoted by the Roman numeral 1 to 4, compose an electron transport chain in the inner mitochondrial membrane that is responsible for the generation of the proton motive force. 
Each complex contains several prosthetic groups that participate in the process of moving the electrons from the donor molecules to acceptor molecules in the coupled oxidation reduction reactions. Let's see the electron carriers which are involved in the electron transport chain. Heme and the cytochromes. Several types of heme, an iron-containing prosthetic group similar to that found in hemoglobin and myoglobin, are tightly bound to a set of mitochondrial proteins called cytochromes. Each cytochrome is designated by a letter such as A, B, C, and C1. Electron flow through the cytochromes occur by oxidation and reduction of the ferrous atom in the center of the heme molecule. Because a heme ring in the cytochromes consists of alternating double and single bonded atoms, a large number of resonance hybrid forms exist. These allow the extra electron delivered to the cytochrome to be delocalized throughout the heme carbon and nitrogen atoms as well as the ferrous ion. The various cytochromes have slightly different heme groups and surrounding atoms, which generate different environments for the ferrous ion. Therefore, each cytochrome has a different reduction potential, which allows electrons to flow in one direction from one to another due to their differing reduction potentials. All cytochromes, except cytochrome C, are components of integral membrane multiprotein complexes in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Cytochrome C is a peripheral membrane protein which binds alternately to cytochrome C1 of complex 3 and cytochrome C oxidase of complex 4 of the electron transport chain. Now let's see the iron sulfur clusters. Iron sulfur clusters are non-heme iron containing prosthetic groups consisting of iron atoms bonded both to the inorganic sulfur atoms and to the sulfur atoms of the cysteine residues in a protein. Iron sulfur clusters accept and release electrons one at a time. At least eight iron sulfur clusters function in mitochondrial electron transfer. Coenzyme Q. Coenzyme Q, also called ubiquinone, is the only small molecule electron carrier in the chain that is not an essentially irreversible protein-bound prosthetic group. It is a carrier of both protons and electrons. The oxidized quinine form of ubiquinone can accept a single electron to form a semiquinone, which is a charged free radical. Addition of a second electron and two protons to semiquinone forms dihydroubiquinone, which is denoted by COQH2, the fully reduced form. Both ubiquinone and dihydroubiquinone are soluble in phospholipids and diffuse freely in the hydrophobic center of the inner mitochondrial membrane. So this is how it participates in the electron transport chain, carrying electrons and protons between the protein complexes of the chain. Let us now consider the multi-protein complexes in which these electron carriers function and the paths taken by the electrons and protons as they pass through these complexes. Four large multi-protein complexes couple electron transport to proton pumping across the mitochondrial inner membrane. Complexes 1 and 2 catalyze electron transfer to ubiquinone from two different electron donors. NADH, which is complex 1, and succinate in complex 2. Complex 3 carries electrons from reduced ubiquinone to cytochrome C. And complex 4 completes the sequence by transferring electrons from cytochrome C to molecular oxygen. Now let's study complex 1. The complex 1, also called NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase or NADH dehydrogenase, is a large enzyme composed of 42 different polypeptide chains, including an FMN containing flavoprotein and iron sulfur centers. It accepts electrons from NADH and passes them through a flavin. FMN, and then through seven iron sulfur centers to ubiquinone, which transfers its electrons to a second respiratory enzyme complex, the cytochrome BC1 complex, or the dihydroubiquinone cytochrome C reductase. 
The overall reaction catalyzed by complex 1 is NADH plus coenzyme Q plus 6 protons which give rise to NAD plus plus 1 proton plus dihydroubiquinone plus 4 protons. Now let's come to complex 2 which is also known as succinate coenzyme Q reductase. Succinate dehydrogenase, the enzyme that oxidizes a molecule of succinate to fumarate in the citric acid cycle is one of the four subunits of complex 2. Thus, the citric acid cycle is physically and functionally linked to the electron transport chain. The two electrons released in the conversion of succinate to fumarate are transferred first to FAD in succinate dehydrogenase, then to the ion sulfur clusters, and finally to coenzyme Q. The overall reaction catalyzed by this complex is succinate plus coenzyme Q gives fumarate plus dihydroubiquinone or reduced coenzyme Q. The released energy in this reaction is not sufficient for proton pumping so no protons are translocated across the membrane directly by this enzyme complex. Thus no proton motive force is generated in this part of the respiratory chain. However, the protons and the electrons in the reduced coenzyme or dihydroubiquinone generated by complex 1 and 2 contribute to the generation of the proton motive force. Now we shall come to complex 3 which is also known as dihydroubiquinone cytochrome C reductase. The function of this complex is that it passes the electrons from the reduced coenzyme Q or dihydroubiquinone to cytochrome C. This complex consists of two cytochrome B and one cytochrome C and only one iron sulfur cluster. A reduced coenzyme Q generated either by complex 1 or complex 2 donates two electrons to the dihydroubiquinone cytochrome C reductase, which is a complex 3, regenerating oxidized coenzyme Q. At the same time, it releases into the intermembrane space two protons previously picked up by the coenzyme Q on the matrix phase, generating part of the proton motive force. Within complex 3, the released electrons first are transferred to an ion sulfur cluster within the complex and then to cytochrome C1 or to the two B-type cytochromes. Finally, the two electrons are transferred sequentially to two molecules of the oxidized form of cytochrome C, a water-soluble peripheral protein that diffuses in the intermembrane space. For each pair of electrons transferred, the overall reaction catalyzed by complex 3 is dihydroubiquinone or a reduced coenzyme Q plus 2 cytochrome C3 plus plus 2 protons gives 1 ubiquinone plus 2 cytochrome C2 plus plus 4 protons. The proton motif Q cycle. Four protons are translocated across the membrane per electron pair transported through the dihydroubiquinone cytochrome C reductase complex. Coenzyme Q plays a key role in the translocation process, which is known as the proton motif Q cycle, or simply the Q cycle. During this process, Coenzyme Q cycles between its reduced and oxidized states by accepting and releasing two protons and two electrons together. Now let's come to complex 4, also known as cytochrome C oxidase. Cytochrome C, after being reduced by one electron from dihydroubiquinone cytochrome C reductase, is reoxidized as it transports its electron to cytochrome C oxidase. Mitochondrial cytochrome C oxidases contain 13 different subunits, but the catalytic core contains only 3 subunits. Four electrons are transported through the cytochrome C oxidase and finally pass to molecular oxygen, which is the ultimate electron acceptor, yielding four molecules of water, which together with oxygen is one of the end products of the overall oxidation pathway. In complex 4, only one proton per electron is transferred, whereas complex 2 transports two protons per electron transferred. 
For each four electrons transferred, the overall reaction catalyzed by cytochrome C oxidase is 4 cytochrome C2 plus plus 8 protons, which gives 4 cytochrome C3 plus plus 2 molecules of water plus 4 protons. Now let's look at ATP synthesis. The main result of the electron transport chain is the proton motive force, which is the sum of the transmembrane proton concentration gradient and the electric potential or the voltage gradient across the mitochondrial in a membrane. This proton motive force is harnessed to synthesize ATP by another multiprotein complex of the inner mitochondrial membrane called the ATP synthase. This enzyme creates a hydrophilic pathway across the inner mitochondrial membrane that allows protons to flow down their electrochemical gradient. As these ions thread their way through the ATP synthase, they are used to drive the energetically unfavorable reactions between ADP and inorganic phosphate that makes ATP. Continued mitochondrial oxidation of NADH and reduction of oxygen are dependent on sufficient ADP being present in the mitochondrial matrix. This phenomenon is called respiratory control and is an important mechanism for coordinating oxidation and ATP synthesis in mitochondria. Let's come to uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation. The two processes, electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation are very tightly coupled normally. However, during resting, when the oxidative phosphorylation is minimal, the electrochemical gradient across the inner mitochondrial membrane builds up to such an extent that it prevents the further pumping of protons, thus inhibiting the transport of electrons also. Compounds such as 2,4-dinitrophenol, DNP, and carbonyl cyanide P, trifluoromethoxyphenyl hydrozone, or better known as FCCP, have been found to uncouple these two processes. In some specialized fat cells, mitochondrial respiration is normally uncoupled from ATP synthesis. In these cells, known as brown fat cells, most of the energy of oxidation is dissipated as heat rather than being converted into ATP. The inner membranes of the large mitochondria in these cells contain a special transport protein that allows protons to move down their electrochemical gradient without activating ATP synthase. As a result, the cells oxidize their fat stores at a rapid rate and produce more heat than ATP. Tissues containing brown fat thereby serve as heating pads that revive hibernating animals and protect sensitive areas of newborn human babies from the cold. Let's come to the conclusion of this lecture. Oxidative phosphorylation is a process in which ATP is formed as a result of the transfer of electrons from NADH or FADH2 to molecular oxygen by a series of electron carriers. The electron transport chain or respiratory chain consists of four large multiprotein complexes that couple electron transport to proton pumping across the mitochondrial inner membrane. Complexes 1 and 2 catalyze electron transfer to ubiquinone and two different electron donors, NADH in complex 1 and succinate in complex 2. Complex 3 carries electrons from reduced ubiquinone to cytochrome C and complex 4 completes the sequence by transferring electrons from cytochrome C to oxygen. So the path of electron flow is from NADH to NADH dehydrogenase, which is complex 1, to ubiquinone, and then to dihydroubiquinone, cytochrome C reductase, which forms a complex 3, to cytochrome C, then to cytochrome C oxidase, which makes up your complex 4, and lastly to molecular oxygen. The resulting electrochemical proton gradient due to this proton pumping is harnessed to make ATP by another transmembrane protein complex, ATP synthase, through which protons flow back into the matrix. The ATP synthase is a reversible
coupling device that normally converts a backflow of protons into ATP phosphate bone energy by catalyzing the reaction ADP plus inorganic phosphate which gives rise to ATP.